Hello, I'm Dave M. from Tyrant Kings Milsim, and today I'll be going over my loadout. This is my primary weapon, it's a Titman M4. I've used it through various games, and it served me quite well. It's extremely reliable. It's very difficult to get this gun to fail unless it's up to user error. It's not usually going to fail you unless you fuck it up yourself. So that's a very good characteristic of this gun. If you're someone who beats up your weapon a lot, then this is a weapon that is not going to fail you on its own due to technical issues. And if it does, Titman, the manufacturer of this gun, is very good with getting replacement parts and customer service in general. I've customized the externals of my gun and the internals. I've put on a Magpul fixed carbine stock. I don't like to deal with wobbly adjustable stocks. The length of pull is quite short, so if you're some large, if you have longer arms, then I wouldn't really recommend it. They they do actually sell an extended butt pad for it, which I'm going to get to extend the length of pull a little bit, so that way it'll be a little bit better for me. But I'm a, quite a small statured person anyway, so it doesn't usually affect me. It comes with flip-up sights that are sort of mock Magpul sights. They're very useful, very easy to see down, very good sight picture. I like standard carry handle sights, so I used a carry handle off of a JG M16 and put it onto the top, and I used that. I also can, I continue using the default front sight that the, the gun came with. It works fine for me. I like that it flips up. And the handguard is default. I painted it along with the rest of my furniture, just with standard camouflage paint, green and brown. This is a uh, aftermarket metal flash hider. I don't want it to break in the field. I've shattered plastic flash hiders in the past. And on my pistol grip, I have put in a uh, ASA adapter. They, they're sold by Titman, so that way I can, unlike regular HPA guns, which you can either, you have to use a line, instead of a remote line to connect to your air supply on your plate carrier, you can directly connect the air supply to the gun itself, the tank. There's no regulator needed. It just goes right off right off the tank with nothing else. This is my secondary weapon. In case my primary weapon fails, I generally don't use it except I'm going to in extreme close quarters. The range on it is very short. This is an Amoeba M4. It's very reliable. I haven't had too many issues with it. Um, the sights that the gun comes with are absolutely terrible. Very low quality. That's why I use the rear sight that originally came with my Titman M4. I still use the front sight because, I mean, it's the same as anything else. The rear sight was it's really terrible. It used a peep sight, very low quality, very prone to breaking. The reason that the front of this gun looks so weird is that it did have a small rail section on it. However, it's secured by these three screws, and the plastic material that it's constructed of is not very durable. It doesn't really hold up to much use in the field. It wore over time, and it will get extremely wobbly through very extended use. So keep that in mind. I just took it off. I don't need it. I, instead of a vertigrip, I just will hold the front of the mag while the gun's short enough that it doesn't, like, it feels completely comfortable doing so. It has a built-in MOSFET, and you can program it, so that way you can either shoot fully automatic or three-round burst in your fully automatic firing mode, obviously, or semi-automatic and safe. Uh, the trigger, and the trigger pull is very good, very short trigger pull, very snappy, and it runs very well on a LiPo. LiPo's not going to destroy its LiPo ready. Now this is the Vastin kit that I use. I use a Fly JPC. It's incredibly durable, remarkable for the price. One of the best investments I've ever made. However, it can get a bit uncomfortable, especially if you're a smaller person like me. It's generally, it's in order to get it secured, it's very tight, especially around the ribs. And over, if you have to wear it for multiple hours on end, then your ribs are going to start being really sore. Especially for me, because I run a HPA gun, so I run my remote line through the side straps of the JPC. It's just three molly strips, and having that cable through the molly strips sort of, you know, pushes it into my side. Gets uncomfortable over long periods of time, but I really, I just sort of deal with it. I don't really worry about it. There's um, a little bit of space, Velcro space on the front if you want to put on your patches, teams, you know, whatever you want to do with that. Uh, holds three, three bags in a integrated kangaroo pouch. You know, pretty useful if you don't have pouches right offhand and you don't have the money to buy them. I run an additional two pouches on the front for extra mags and a radio pouch. 
I put it on my front because on the sides of the vest, the vest isn't very large, and it'll sort of be very uncomfortable if you have to roll over on it when you're prone on the ground and all that good stuff. On the back of the vest, I run a aftermarket hydro carrier. That's what I generally run my high-pressure air tank in for my Titman M4. It works for me. Uh, this one in particular is very good because it's it runs out the side, my line. I would recommend looking for, if you do run a high-pressure air tank on like something like this, it's good to get a hydro carrier where there's a slot in the side for your line to come out, because otherwise you're going to kink it and damage it and you don't want to blow it. I run a traditional OD sling, it's no different than really the millions others out there. <laughs> Nothing really special with that for my rifle. This is my helmet. Who the fuck makes this helmet? I think this is a Lancer Tactical Helmet. I, uh, it works really well for me, extremely durable. They have versions that have holes in the top. I didn't want to, I mean, it's good for ventilation, but I personally prefer the sealed version, which is what I have here, so that way I don't have BBs coming through my skull and, you know, ripping my face off. And, yeah, it works for me. Very protective, good high-quality plastic, very lightweight, it's not going to break on you. I, it comes with Velcro to put on the helmet, but it's very low quality. Wouldn't recommend using it. You're better off just going go to the store, like, uh, what do you call it? like we do, and buy strips of your own Velcro, and put it on your helmet where you want it, higher quality. You can choose what the shape is, where you want to put your stuff. I run uh, a light. This is a team color friendly light green. I'm going to get a red one to put on here as well. And you can put patches wherever you want if you do that. And we put our name tapes on the back of our helmets. The suspension, the system inside the helmet to adjust it to your head, very ad adjustable for many different sides of head. I have a very weird shaped head, kind of large, I don't know. A lot of helmets won't fit my head, this one does, so I recommend it to really anybody, because it'll pretty much fit anyone. NVD child built in, and that's about it. And I'm Dave M, and this has been my Airsoft Loadout. Thanks for watching. If you want to see any of our other content, Airsoft related, all cool stuff from me and my team, like, favorite, and subscribe that we use are Baofeng UV5Rs. They come with a battery, an antenna, belt clip, charger, and a little earbud that's not that useful for airsoft. For this you're going to need goggles, dish soap, and a cloth or a rag.